All right, so this is the second video in the voided check, I guess, series <laughs> when we're looking at uh, voiding checks in QuickBooks. So this is going to be setting up a voided check in a closed period. Now in the other video, I kind of explained why you'd want to close a period, but we're going to pretend, right? So in this video, so I closed my period. This is a sample file. It thinks it's December 2020. I've done with my month in November of 2020. I've reconciled my bank accounts, everything like that. So that's what we're going to pretend in this video. Okay. But before I close it, I'm going to go ahead and put this check in. So I'm going to put in check number one, two, five, so we can recognize it. And I'm going to date it November 27th. I'm going to pay it to Alan's Diner for $45. And for just purposes of this video, I'm going to stick it to bad debt. So in this part, I'm putting it to an expense account. Okay. Now that's really important because for the first area of this video, I'm going to show you something QuickBooks does automatically to help us out. But QuickBooks only does it if it's pointing, if the check we're voiding is pointing to an expense account. Okay. Not a cost of goods sold, not accounts payable, nothing else. Expense account. So bad debt here. I'm just going to stick it there again because it's easier to find. Okay, so I have my check. I'm going to say save. Okay, now it's the end of the month. I'm going to go in there. I've closed out all my checking account. You know, this transaction most likely did not reconcile. Um, but I'm going to go in and set my closing date password as of November 30th and put in my closing date password there. Okay. All right. So closing date has been set. So now it's the middle of December and I realized that this did not clear my bank and I expected it to. So I want to void it. Okay. So I'm going to come in here to this transaction and I'm going to select void. Okay. And then once I hit save, first it's going to pop up and make me put in my closing date password. Then it's going to pop up a little warning here. So it says the check you are avoiding was written in an accounting period that is now closed, right? I put in my closing date password. It's affecting a closed period. To maintain the accuracy of your financial reports and balance the accounts affected by the check, QuickBooks can create a journal entry in an earlier period and reverse it. Okay, would you like QuickBooks to do that for you? So I'm going to say yes for now so we can see what this does. All right. So first of all, what it does on this check, it voids the check, just like in the previous video, right? It makes it go to zero, marks it as cleared automatically, and then it does a couple extra things. It does put this memo in here. So it says GJE, which stands for General Journal Entry, and RGJE, Reversing General Journal Entry, created. Okay, so I'm gonna say save and close. Now just to see what it did, the easiest way for me to go in there, I'm going to pull up the bad debt expense. Right now it's showing me for current. I'm going to go back a couple days so we can see everything. So here's that voided check, zero dollars. Then QuickBooks created first the GJE, so the journal entry. So the journal entry, what this journal entry does is it replicates exactly what the check originally had done, right? It says $45 has come out of the checking account and we have an expense for $45 pointing to bad debt and it's for Allen's Diner, okay? And again, bad debt's probably not a good example, but I just used it so that we could find it easily. <laughs> okay, so it creates this transaction as of 1127 to completely replicate what the original check had done because we voided the check. So why do we do this? It's because our financials have already gone out. We've already sent them to our you know, bank, to our management company, etc. We don't want to change our balances in the closed period. We still need to reflect that we had $45 taken out. We still need to reflect that we had a $45 expense in November. So then the second step of this is the reversing entry. So then on the current date, 1215, 
QuickBooks also created what's called the reversing entry for that, right? So it then goes in and puts the cash back in our checking account and it reverses out that $45 expense for bad debt. But it does it in the current period so it doesn't affect prior periods. Okay. So that's how QuickBooks does it automatically. Now again, the only way that that works where it will do those three steps for you, the check, the journal entry, and the reversing, is if it's a check transaction, not a bill payment, not a credit card transaction, nothing like that. If it's a check transaction and it's put to an expense account, not a cost of goods sold, you know, not a fixed asset, nothing has to be to an expense account. So now what do we do if we're trying to void a bill payment or if we're trying to void a check put to a cost of goods sold account, right? So what we want to do when that happens is we want to do something similar to what QuickBooks does. I think that they put in one extra step there. <laughs> um, they put in, so we want to do something similar to what QuickBooks does, uh, but we're going to create the journal entries on our own. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for just a check again. So first of all, I'm going to put in the check to AA Tech Consultants, and I'm going to say that it was for a cost of goods sold for $400. And I'm going to date it the 26th. Now when I save this, I already had the period closed. I'm not going to go open the period and reclose it but I'm just gonna post that in there for now. Okay, so we had this $400 payment that was in there at the end of November, and now in December I realize I need to void this check. Okay, so what do I do? Now I come in here and I'm going to first, I'm not gonna actually void it. You can do it the two steps where QuickBooks does where it creates the journal entry to void it, reverses the journal entry out. You can do that if you want to. Um, I choose to do it just a little bit one step less. So basically in here I come in and I just say void. So I put in there the voided and then maybe I'll put in there uh, journal entry dated you know 12-15-2020. Okay. So instead of voiding this transaction create a journal entry to replicate this transaction and then create another journal entry to reverse it I just use that. I just put in there voided so that I can remember that in the future. It'll still make me put in my closing date password even though I'm just editing the memo, just FYI. Okay. And again, you can do it either way. So then, to help me out, I come in and I look at my transaction journal in QuickBooks so I know which accounts are affected so I know what I need to do with my journal entry. That's going to, going to reverse this. So then I come into company and I make my journal entries. Now I'm going to date the journal entry in the current period, right? Because I don't want to affect prior periods. Okay. So I come in here with my journal entry and I'm going to put in the current period date entry number. So reverse for check 126 as an example. Uh, I'm going to put in here the account. So I'm going to flip flop this, right? So first I have account 1110. Before it was a credit, now I'm going to debit it. To void check number 126. Okay, so the check number, it was written out to AAA Tech Consultants. If I had a class, I can put the class in here. The other side of it is going to go to account 5000. Again, it was a debit. To reverse it, I'm putting it to a credit. It picks up that I'm voiding it, and again, I'd want to put in there AA Tech Consultants. Okay, so in the current period, I'm creating a journal entry to reverse that transaction. All right. Now, just as a you know, a special pointer there, if I did go in and try and void this transaction, and I hit save. It would make me put in my closing date password and notice it just voids it, right? Kind of scary. 
it doesn't pop up and give you a warning. And again, that's because it was put to a cost of goods sold account. If it was put to an expense account, it would help me out. But since it was supposed to put to a cost of goods sold account, it kind of says, all right, you're choosing to avoid this. <laughs> so you just want to be aware of that. All right, so that's how to avoid a check in a closed period.